Listen, y'all asked us a whole lot of personal questions that we're here to answer. And yeah. This is our 2021 Q&A. We try to do this annually. Listen, for all of the questions that kind of piggybacked <clears throat> off of questions we already answered in last year's Q&A, we're just going to summarize those, but we're going to link that video below so that if you want to know the detail, the detail, then you can go over there because the answers don't change. Yeah. <laughs> but let's go ahead in summary because we had a whole lot of how long y'all been together where y'all meet. First, we have a, a entire video of how we met. Yep. We'll link that below. But in summary, we met because I used to be a hair, like a kitchen beautician. I used to do everybody's hair. A guy that he worked with who is actually my cousin <laughs> ended up asking him to be in his wedding the girl that he was marrying, they didn't know that I used to do her hair and that she also was married into my mom's part of the family. Yep. <laughs> and when we got to the, and I was in the wedding, when we got to the um, church, he saw me, we saw it, and that's how we met. So technically we met at church in a wedding. Right. And it all started with hair. And it all started with hair. <laughs> how long we've been together? We've been together over 20 years. We'll yeah. say 21, 22 years. How old are we? I am 43. And I'm 42. What else did y'all want to know? Uh, why don't I want to have children? That's something I talked about in the last um, Q&A in detail. But in summary, I just ain't want to. Just didn't want it. Didn't want the responsibility. I like being a free agent. <laughs> Next question. How do you keep the spice in your marriage? We like being spontaneous. We're always open to new things. Right. You know, stuff that we just can't talk about to other people because they'd be like, really, y'all? Really? Like, that's how we do it. We just don't try to keep things the same because our life is like a revolving door. Like, there's so many things that are constant in our life. Our mm, life shouldn't be one of them. It should be different. Yeah, and, and like I told you, basically adding spice to your marriage or your relationship is basically doing something different than what y'all do habitually day in and day out. Yeah. Just like... That's like chicken. You put different spices <laughs> on your chicken because you don't want it the same all the time. So you change it up. Change it up. So that's it. You're just changing it up. How do you keep it spicy while having a parent live with you? Very loud music. Yeah. Very loud TVs. And go ahead and get you a room. Yeah. Over at one of the, the Hilton Inn and Spa or something like that. Yeah. You do have to be mindful it's almost like having children in the house like you just can't or since you said children or get it done before the children get up <laughs> uh, have you ever had a rough patch in your marriage absolutely like but what we consider rough patches in our marriage most people would think that's like really y'all consider that a rough patch like because our dynamic is what it is like we don't have the interference of family we don't have the dynamic of children wow. we don't have thank god we no longer have financial struggles so our rough patches is, is totally different than other people's most of the time it's personality conflict right or life or just yeah or life mm -hmm. coming up and having to you have to do this or you have to do that most of our stuff is outside yeah. of ourselves um you've been together for so long do we know how to set each other off so how do we basically how do we make sure that we're not hitting below the belt when we get into it that's i, I would say that's that's pretty easy like when you when you love somebody like for those that you know you know in the bible uh, that read your bible that basically love works no ill towards your brother and i'm just gonna put a sister in there and that's that's one of the things i just live by is like if i say this is my queen this is my partner we in a team why would i hit her below the belt because we have an argument right because after the argument we still have a relationship that has to be preserved and move forward so if i say something real hurtful she might not ever get past it. Like they say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt. And that's the biggest lie they ever told. Yep. The words cut people for years. Some of us still dealing with some skit that people said to us way back when. Has anybody ever come into your DMs to be disrespectful? Not the DMs, <laughs> but blatantly in videos. Like there yeah, was- On random. <laughs> yeah, on our yeah. other channel, like yeah. there was a guy that literally almost every video for like two months would say, 
oh, I can't wait to sit down and mess so up. So I mess up so he can get a chance. He was like, oh, every time Lynette licks her lips, I just have to bite yeah. mine. I mean, it was a lot. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, are we serious right now? And people in the comments, I left him <laughs> unblocked because people in the comments gave it to him. Like, yeah. we didn't even have to say anything. Um, I was yeah. like, dang, bro. What, what, what makes you think if I mess up that you got a chance? Yeah. <laughs> And, and how it worked. Right. <laughs> and and what helps us too is that we have joint social media. Yeah. As far as our brand. And no one off of YouTube knows our personal social media. Exactly. So there's no, you can't hide behind it because you don't know who's looking at it. Um, What advice would you give for a great sex life? Kind of answer that. Like keep it spicy. Keep yep. it spontaneous. Um, visit novelty stores. Yep. Make sure that you're doing things to keep their antennas up. Yep. Um, make sure that you are open to doing new things. Like, And be so open in conversation that if other people were listening to y'all, they'd be like, y'all yeah. some motherfucker freaks. <laughs> hey, but check this out. I can't specifically say it. You know, we're going to try to keep it PG. But if, if you're trying to enhance the... Climax, that's what we're gonna say. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking. There are different like programs and stuff that's out there that can teach you techniques and stuff to bring enhancements to your sex life. Mm -hmm. So I just put it there. Just go on Google. You find it. On the next note. <laughs> say it seems as though Stanley wanted children but Lynette did not. How did you two agree to sway Lynette's way? And do you feel empty or bothered by not having children? Oh, um, I did, to be honest, I did in the beginning, but as our marriage started to un unfold, um, I saw that where children would have, would, would have, wouldn't have been a, they still would have been a blessing, but it would have put us in some situations where some things would have had to been given up because we didn't see a, a place for them to be able to fit. So it was going to be either or. But actually, one time we had we we did talk about having children, and that quickly and changed. Yeah, yeah, but that quickly changed because of a that situation that happened. Mm -hmm. A situation happened in our life, and we was like, you know what? Nah, it doesn't we, fit. It doesn't fit. So, that's, and this is one of those situations in life <clears throat> that we could actually have our input on. <laughs> yeah. Like some things, life just happens to you. This is something that we actually had full control over. Mm -hmm. And we worked it the way that needed to be worked for our lifestyle and our right. dynamic. Yeah, so we just say um, it's been a blessing, thank God, that it did not happen because some of the the turns and stuff we had to make wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah and we wouldn't be had. traveling like this. Right. <laughs> you know, because if you, and mm -hmm. not to go really in detail, but for our life, we had to like look at it as a really big picture. And we don't have a support system that will be able to help us navigate the lifestyle that we have now with children in the mix. You know, you know, you see, she can't babysit. You right. know what I'm saying? His mother lives <clears throat> over an hour away. We don't have the dynamic where we could have that village for our children. So that was a part of the process for me as well. So don't let nobody ever, ever pressure you into having kids. Because it's a lot, it's, yeah. and it's a lifetime commitment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's not like that. 18. Right. So, um, <clears throat> Lynette, has there ever been any tension with Stanley's family? I don't know why y'all just asked him that. Why? I mean, ask no. that question that way, but Never. no, ne like really, Never. I can honestly <laughs> say when it comes to families, both of us have yeah. the perfect yes. families <clears throat> for us when it comes to our marriage. Nobody interferes. Matter of fact, her family defends me yeah. over her and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, like there's never been a thing. Like there's never been a, who is this? Why is they, why they here? Who this new person in the family? No, like literally, if you would see me in a setting against Stanley's family, you probably would think I'm a part of them. Yep. Because I am. <laughs> and vice versa. If you see him at my family, you gonna see him at the spades table. They gonna be sitting up there chopping it up, having disagreements yep. about politics, religion. And don't let me show up without her. Like, yeah. uh, where your wife at? Yeah, so. Oh, she at home? No, nah, we've never had it. Thank <laughs> yeah, God thank we've God. never That's had it. a blessing. It. Yeah. Um, since you guys seem to be happily married, can you please provide some tips on selecting a mate? Um, because you guys seem to have gotten it right. Let, I'll let you answer that. 
there is no one that's in a relationship that can tell you how to select a mate. That's that's personal. You have to actually know what it is that you want in your love life and if that person can actually deliver. And what I mean by that is that person, even then, if your list could be 10 or 15 things that you want to be loved, but that person only able to do seven or eight. Right. And you got to ask yourself, do I want to be with that person? They only can meet these particular needs. So basically it's, 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 it's personal. I mean, because what works for us might not work for you. That's so true. Yeah. So you have to basically, here's the, the here's the long and short. You have to get into the relationship first to find <laughs> out if it's for you. You can't like, uh, we say you, you know, this, 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 and this perfect mate. Unfortunately, it don't work that way. I wish it did mm -hmm. because we went through a whole lot of crazy people and bad relationships before <laughs> we got to this. Yeah, we did. And what you see right now is 20 years in the making. So if you just getting started, be prepared to put in the time and the work. It's a lot of work. You got to make it work. It's a lot of work. It'll um, work if you make it work. Piggybacking off of what you said, but kind of tweaking for me. For me, like he said, there's no blueprint. And there are some things that you have on your checklist. You also, for me, I had things that were non-negotiable. So when I started dating, and this has been me my entire life because crazy as it sounds, I always knew in my life I didn't want children. I have never in my life dated someone with children. That's a non-negotiable for me. Because if I get entangled with you and we fall in love, I can't make your children go away. So my non-negotiable was top of the list, date no man with children. Next one, don't date a man that does not have a solid family foundation because that's something that I lacked. Yeah. So that's something that I knew that I needed someone to aid me or let me be able to get a bird's eye view of it. That was a non-negotiable for me. If you came from a broken home, I couldn't date you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. I had a couple of things, so make sure that your non-negotiables are really your non-negotiables and not things that you can or can't live with. And make sure those things that are underneath of it are things that you can be willing to work with. Right. So that that's my answer. So someone said, if we could clone the two of you in your marriage, the black community would be so much improved. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. that. Um, <laughs> says, Stanley said, I love the way you treat Lynette. You showed me that I need to be better with my wife. What do you do in your spare time and do you have your own man space? Yes, sir. I got I got my own space right on over there. And um, you know, I I uh, I watch a lot of educational videos. I love to edit videos, I love to shoot videos. Um also like going hanging out with my friends. We go to the bar, we go to the range, uh, we do some Strip other up. man stuff, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I do have a, a life outside of my wife. But at first, to admit, when we first got together, we did not. I mean, we was like, all I mean, I mean, all. all. And then um, eventually, we realized that hey, we need a balance. We need a balance. So yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's normal for but, most newlyweds. Like they want to be with each other yeah. twenty four seven, and then you realize ain't nobody outside of us right now. Yeah. And then you have to figure out how to how to bring people in. And that's probably because you, you've you got a new person in your life, y'all trying to learn mm -hmm. a new dynamic and then adding people just yeah. may be a little too much. But yeah, the reason why y'all haven't really seen us with our friends is because of COVID. Yeah. But, with, but, but if you go back, we, we've seen, yeah, if you go back to some of the vlogs, you'll see some you'll of see our friends. You'll see little bits yeah, of Yeah, of our friends, yeah. Uh, so what's y'all's top romantic song? We really don't have one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, Is know, that weird? No, it's not. But not everybody has one. And like I said, um, like I said, beginning, like, it's like certain cliches of relationship that people say you have to have to have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. It's what makes your relationship work. Now, um, there are certain songs that come on that we'd be like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, you know, get us get us there, but yeah, it ain't a particular one yeah. we can say, hey. That's our song. Yeah. <laughs> or that like the other night, like, we're go go ahead. And there's one song that if Stanley knows that, if that song is uh -huh. one and he comes in the room, he's like, oh, you in it. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> she be up in there. Mm. Uh, all right, we can oh, stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's the affectionate one? 
Stanley shows y'all more of his affection. I'm more of the, I don't do PDA a lot. I don't know if y'all have noticed that, but we're both, I think we're equally affectionate. I, I think we equally, but we show our affection different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who's more likely to initiate talking after an argument? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, Correct. Yeah. <laughs> who's more likely to pop off at the mouth? Who's more sensitive? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think either um, one of us are sensitive. Yeah. Because uh, we could give it and we could also take yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff we sensitive about and some stuff we not, so yeah. I, but yeah. that also goes with the hitting below the belt. Right. I know how to hurt him. And yeah, he knows and know how, how to how hurt, hurt me. Hurt. Yep. But we don't do it. Yep. Um, who's the radio hog in the car? I don't know. I don't no. Think, no, I think it's kind of balanced because uh -uh. We, 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 we listen to the same music. What, but you, it's, it's hooked up to your Bluetooth. I mean, but, but we in my car though, you know? <laughs> so the answer is that. <laughs> Who is the messiest? Equally. Equally. Yeah. Equally. Our resume, the house gets towed off from the flow up and then and we then clean we'll, it up. And then we're at the end of the night because we can't go to bed with a junkie yeah. house. So we have a balance. We'll mess it up and we'll clean it up. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go into the family related questions. Is it okay to select certain family members to meet your future husband or wife for the first time? I have family members that I haven't spoken to in years and I want to keep my partner away from their dysfunctional behavior for a little while. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd give you permission to cut family members off, period. Not for your mate, for you. Yeah. Trust me. Especially if it's toxic. Yeah. yeah. Um, very selective. I've had family members that I can't let come to my house. Because no, you mm -mm, you too toxic. Like mm -mm, you're not leaving that bad energy over here. <laughs> right. You know, uh, and it's not a bad thing. I had to tell somebody not too long ago that I I'm gonna choose peace for my life. That's right. Regardless of how mm -hmm. you see and and I hate that. Oh, that's just your. Oh, but you yeah. only get one. Oh, you know how they are. Oh, you know how they. No, no, mm -hmm. no. You're asking me to accept toxic behavior mm -hmm. for the sake of relationship, and right. I won't do it. Right. I won't do it in a marriage. I'm not doing it for bloodline either. No. Not doing it. And it don't mean you don't love them. Yep. <laughs> I just have boundaries. Yeah, just have boundaries. You still love them, yeah. So, absolutely. Mm. So, how do your parents feel about you being so transparent about your relationship and your past concerning them? Do other family members have issues with you sharing? Also, how many siblings do you all have? I think this is more for me because I'm more transparent about my situation. Um, let me go ahead and preface this by saying I don't care. <laughs> um, and it took me a very long time to get to a point or a place where I don't care what I share because this is my experience. Right. I'm not gonna keep allowing what you did and how you made me feel, our dirty little secret. If I feel like sharing a part of my life that makes me who I am right now, I don't give a buck about how you feel about it. Yeah. I really don't. Um, do I do it in a way that makes sure that your feelings are somewhat protected, that I'm not trying to add any malice towards you? Yes, but truth also does that. And truth sets you free. Yes. So I'm not going to not live in my truth and how things happen. And here's the thing. Y'all know this. Like, we talk, you see me scratching right here? Hmm. You ain't went through the bone, the meat, the tendons, all that. You Y'all right here. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> y'all think this is transparent? Mm-mm, baby. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how do they feel about it? Honestly, I don't think anybody has enough uh, to even try to check me about that because they just don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like you said, and we make sure that we don't share nothing that has not directly affected us. Right. Right. So if it's like some other stuff of family that haven't directly affected us, we won't we won't share that. Um, and then if we do share something that happened, it ain't because we trying to get sympathy. It's because we trying. It's really to, happening. It's really happening. And then also we trying to let people know in the world that hey, you ain't crazy. You ain't the only one going through that. Right. Yeah, that you that we in the fight with you. Now, will we admit that there have been some situations where we feel like maybe we shouldn't have? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. 
Um, and that goes with that question. How does your family feel about you sharing? Here's the, here's the thing about family. And this is one of the things I always told my husband. So family, if you're watching, listen closely. I wish that we had never, ever, ever brought a camera out around our family because family would not know what it is that we do because family swear that they don't watch us, but they, but they know <laughs> everything that we do and they don't participate. They don't congratulate. They don't do anything. It's that one video that they happen to see and they hear something that they don't like, then you get checked on the back end. Right. And I don't like that because <clears throat> celebrate me in my successes. I've shown a lot of successes here. We have shown a lot of growth here. We have done tremendous things, not to pat ourselves on the back. And it'll be one time where they feel like we just shared a little too much mm -hmm. and we get checked about it. Or that's not the way it was. Or why are you talking about that? Why you get rid of that sofa? You know such and such needed a sofa. Oh, oh, that's the <laughs> video you you say you saw. So, but the good, but the good thing that haven't happened in a long, a, long, long, and it doesn't time. happen a lot. Yeah, it hasn't happened in a long. It's been years since it happened. But every time it does happen, <clears throat> it lets us know yeah. how many family really do watch us. Right. They just don't say anything. But from what happened, caused us to pivot, and I think the way that we've pivoted caused it not to happen. Right. Right. So, so even with the things that we think are innocently shared. Some people are like, no, 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 you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have shared. So really, a lot of times, y'all probably try to figure out, do you even hang with family? We do. We just don't show y'all. Um, yeah, and that's it, fair. Yeah. That's fair. Because at the end of the day, they didn't ask to be on YouTube. Yeah. And that's so. that's beginner YouTuber mistakes. mistakes and, yeah. you know, you want everybody like to be included. Yeah. I yeah. want everybody included. You know, and I you, love my family. So I know y'all will love my family. So, but yeah, not everybody. And then you to get a false camera. sense of acceptance because if you're in the camera and you're doing what you do and they jumping in the camera, what's up? And you think that, oh, okay, you jumping in the camera. You, you know what we do. But then seeing it roll back, they're like, oh no, yeah. why are you? <laughs> so for now, we just don't, we don't feature people a lot on our channel because of that. So I hope that answered the collective question. Um, how many siblings do we have? From my mom, I have a brother. Um, collectively from her ex-husband that who is now deceased, I have two sisters and a brother that I don't no longer claim. So when I did that, you know that they're there, but I'm over here. Um, you oh, know. I have uh, I have one brother, which y'all saw him on the Thanksgiving video, and I have a sister. She been on here before too, but it's yeah. been a while ago. Yeah. So I have one brother, one sister, um, and a slew of nieces and nephews. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, say, Lynette, because you're so open and transparent, da, 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 does your mom look at your videos? No, she doesn't even know how to use any kind of tech, but I guarantee you she knows. <laughs> yes, yeah, some family probably. Yeah, so, yeah, so probably. Um, but will she ever say anything? Probably not. I mean, because what I share and what I provide, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you, you can't. Um, so next thing, personal, what made y'all start YouTube? I'll let you start because it was your idea and I was totally yeah. against it. Yeah, because so, I had noticed she was watching a bunch of um, bunch of videos on YouTube. So one night I was in there and I was like, what are you watching? And she was like, I'm watching Gabe and Babe TV. I was like, okay. So I was like, you just watching their life? She's like, yeah. So I started watching. I was like, hmm, it's pretty interesting. I said, that looks like, hmm. So I said, let's, let's, let's try that out, let's try that out. And she was like, oh no, no. hell all the way to the no. We ain't, we ain't doing it. And then eventually I convinced her and we got out there and now we're here. And the I thought you was gonna hit on this part. The drawing force that made him convince me to do it was there was no black on black representation oh, yeah. at the time. Right. At the time, the only people that looked like us, and when I say us, I'm talking about a black man with a black woman, was um Juice and Sandy. Mm -hmm. Um Lord, what's her channel name? Um they go on it. You know her. She's like, what's up, y'all? I can't uh, think of a name now. But Sandy and Juice, they were the only yeah. ones that... That you, that you knew of. That we time. knew of that had a sizable channel at the time. Like, anyone else that had sizable channels at that time were either Caucasian or they were interracial. 
no black on black representation. So Stanley was like, we can do this. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cause we here too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lynette, what do you use on your beautiful skin? Thank you so much. Um, I did a B roll of it because I didn't want to bring products out here. So let's go ahead and roll that right now. As far as what I use on my face, if I'm wearing makeup, I make sure that I use the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm on my face that takes off everything that you could possibly have on your face. Then I use this Urban RX Cleansing Bar. Then I will mist my face with the Mario Badescu, and that is the uh, um, Aloe Herb and Rose Water um, Spray. Then I treat my eyes. I either will use the Wide Awake Eye Gel or I will use the Vitamin C and Collagen by Claire's. Um, also from Urban RX line. You can also get this in the three pack. It's the Even Tone Super Glow Serum. I put that all over my face. Then you let that soak in and then you use the Retinol Rapid Repair and Dark Spot Treatment. I use that all over my face and my neck as well. Then I follow up with some collagen um, body oil, but I use this on my face. So any kind of collagen vitamin C oil, let that soak in. And then put a sheer layer, um, layer of sunscreen on your face. And I use the SPF of 100. Now once a week, this is what I do. Once a week I do an exfoliation treatment. So I start off with the cleansing bar once again. Then I go in here lately. I've been using my girl, I subscriber Nini's coffee scrub. Do y'all see how granulated that is? It will take off everything. So I use that as an exfoliant all over my face, even on my lips. Then I'll go in with some Dickinson's, which hazel, the alcohol free. Miss my face with the Mario Badescu. Use some more of my collagen oil. And then I will follow it up with Nini's peppermint scented shea butter all over and go to freaking bed. The stuff is amazing. So yeah, I will leave a link below to all of the products that you can possibly find online or substitute products. All right, I know y'all saw that that was a lot of products. It really isn't. Those are my staple products. I really don't deviate from them much. So what I'll do to help you all out, because I know y'all gonna buy them, and y'all probably be like, look, my cart probably say about $100 right now. I'm about to give y'all $30. How about that? Go ahead and hit that link below. It's Rakuten. Rakuten will give you $30 on your first purchase. So what happens is sign up, Use a new email. So if you've already signed up, you need a new email. Yeah. Sign up. Go ahead and once you're in there, go to alta.com. Fill your card out with all the goodies I'm about to leave below in the description field. Check out buy your products. Within 24 to 48 hours, usually it's 24 hours, but it's Christmas. We'll give them 48 hours. Whatever <clears throat> rebate method you told them you want your rebates on, minus PayPal. That third of all is gonna hit your account. So basically, whatever you spent minus that by 30, boom. Merry, yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Lynette, have you ever been to Haiti and if and would you go? I definitely would go. I have not gone. Um, am I connected to it at all? I'm not. I wish I were, but I'm not. Um do you did you guys go to college with your major? Da 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 da. Definitely. Um, Stan said he don't want to tell y'all what his um, degree is in. I'll tell you what mine is. It's um, business administration with a concentration on business law. Um, reason we don't get too big on degrees is because we ain't doing nothing with them. <laughs> like, I don't feel like our degrees have no. enhanced my life at all. Right. And no, it ain't that I didn't want to see her. I did not go to college. He didn't go to traditional college. I didn't college. go to traditional college, no. And not and not a community college either. It's, it was for something totally, totally different. He has a but specialized skill set. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so traditional college, no. Uh, yeah, didn't have the funds for that. I ain't either. Yeah. But but you had money for something. You but made, it made, you, I had loans. Student, student loans. I uh, had loans. Woo. 
Said Biden need to go ahead and forget them student loans for y'all, man. Oh, he came out the other day and said he ain't doing it. He ain't doing it. That's what he said. Oh. But anyway, he said, hello, I would like to know if you all spend time with your friends, meaning Stanley with his friends and vice versa. Yeah, I think we just answered that. We way. answered that. Yeah. And here's the thing. I, I had to pat ourselves on the back because we vlog so seamlessly with each other and each other alone that y'all don't think we do anything other than what we do. But here's the thing. We have a couple's channel. Yeah. Me vlogging by myself would be weird. Him vlogging by himself would be weird. Him vlogging with his friends would be weird. Me vlogging with my friends would be weird. So you never see <clears throat> that dynamic with us. You may see us separately a little bit within a vlog, but you never see like total vlogs of us by ourselves. We definitely oh, have yeah. a whole life outside of each other. Yeah. You just don't see it. <clears throat> and you also have to realize that we are in our 40s. Most of our friends, they don't do social media on the level that we do social right. media. So we're not going to be one of those people that we out with our friends. We, yo, yo, we eating food and uh -huh. da, 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 da. Like we do that because that's who we are and that's who yeah. we, you know, this is what we signed up for. Our friends don't care nothing about none of that. You probably they know. just want to hang out with us. They just want to hang out <laughs> yeah. with us. They don't want the camera. They don't want to see the camera. I don't think a lot of them would mind, but at the same time, we have a time with our friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we definitely have life outside each other. Admittedly, because it is COVID, it's it's taking a back burner. Yeah. More than we are comfortable with. Of uh, the physical hangout. So yeah. Most of it be online, you know, text. Uh huh. Um, we'll do live together stuff and like that. Yeah. Stuff like because you gotta realize too, our most of our friends don't have, friends. I says friends. Friends don't have the dynamic we have either. Most of them have families, and we're still. In so you trying to say we're not a family like the oh, person yeah, said last said year? Family, yeah. <laughs> um, but their dynamic is they have children in their home to protect. The more they're out and about hanging mm -hmm. out with people, you know, the more exposure you can bring to your children. So you got all of those dynamics going on at once, you know. So that's why. So, but I'd be so glad when COVID <laughs> is over with because I need a trip with my girls. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> need it ASA to the P. Yeah. Um, says, um, any stories about y'all's arguments? And how y'all handle it. I can't even remember like a knockdown drag out argument. Like we, yeah, we, we had argue. Tats. Yeah, we argue, but it it hasn't like got to the point to where Yeah, it's you know, heated, heated, heated where, you know, People I'm storming out the house and, and all that kind of stuff. Nah. Um a lot of ours used to happen around church. Yeah. If you really want to be honest. Mm -hmm. And now that we've taken a back burner to the responsibility that we had, it's it's no longer a thing. Yeah. Church used to be a lot. Oh, so to be since we since we transferred, what, what she basically saying is that sometimes uh I would put church responsibilities over her. Because at the time I thought it was right because I was doing it for for God. You know, you put God first. So, and the repercussions I, I, is more heavier from a church perspective than it is from your spouse. Right. <laughs> but there's a difference in putting church responsibilities before your spouse and putting God before your spouse. It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Le leaving that. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving with that right there. <laughs> um, when you all pass away, who is getting everything that you work for? You're trying to kill us. <laughs> um. I think Stanley wanted to answer it in detail, but I'll answer it blanketly. There are certain things that we have set up that when we pass away, if the other spouse is still here, mm -hmm. boom, they're set for life. We have other aspects underneath of that that include other people. Right. Um, there are other aspects under that <clears throat> that includes no one. It's just a fresh start. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so so basically what she's trying to say is, it's still in the workings, is that we're trying to set up our family for generational wealth. Um, and for those of you who know we're talking about, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're trying to set that up so that the next generation don't have to struggle the way we did. And we say next generation, we're talking about our nieces and our nephews. And we're children. trying to give them a good start into the world. And so we have 
you know, we got some things in place that we making that, um, making it happen. Yeah. So ultimately <laughs> the people that's closest to us will be okay. Right. Um, what's something you guys learned differently from last year? Oh. Um, I've learned to, for me, live with the beast. And what I mean by that is at first, when COVID first hit, it was such a, it, it was such a paralyzing thing. Like I legit was paralyzed and I'm not a fearful person of anything. Um, then after a while, I realized that mentally I'm about to lose my skit. <laughs> so I learned to navigate with the beast as carefully as I could, protecting myself as much as I could, researching micron, micron sizes. What kind of filters do I need to put in my mask? Because if the micron is 0.5, then I need a <laughs> mask that's 0.3 so that micron can't go through it. I'm a nerd. I read everything. <laughs> so that was me learning to live with the beast. That was me last year. Uh, what I learned differently from last year, you know, we always used to say the cliche, you know, live, you know, live your life to the fullest now because you don't know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. And so when COVID came through and then took all this time away from us, that's what I learned that you really have to live your life to the fullest. You need to live your best life now, today. Because you don't know if you will even be here tomorrow. Oh, you don't know if something will come along and take that much of your life. Something invisible, something we never heard of, change that. So that's that's my dynamic. It's like living my best life now because I might not have tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Cool. Um, any plans to start a life with us Facebook page? Um, we have it. We just don't use it. We don't it. use it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use it. But if you wanna join. And maybe that's something we can get popping. I'm going to leave the link below. Um, the more people that's on it, maybe that will encourage us to do stuff on it. But real talk, we are spread so thin. Yeah. Um, and what we try to do is we try to give our attention where it counts. Mm -hmm. And right now, YouTube is where it, it counts. Mm -hmm. Instagram is where it counts. So that's what we are right now. But I don't have any problem with, you know, tinkling over there here and then. <clears throat> um, how do you guys manage your grocery budget? Food is always something I go over budget with. We don't. <laughs> um, if you've been around for any amount of time, my husband is like a financial guru. Like the way he sets up financing is like, boom. So if you want to talk about how you do it, then I will tell you how I work within your strategy. Gotcha. That, that'll work. Yeah. So basically, basically we have, we have a budget, but the budget is not specific like this is how much I'm gonna spend on groceries, this is how much I'm gonna spend on clothes, this is how much I'm gonna spend on entertainment. We used to do that way, but that way was very stressful. So we changed it to where we have certain percentages that, uh, that we allocate to make sure that we're good on both sides. So we have a certain amount that goes to savings and a certain amount that we spend. And that helps us to not have a strict food budget so basically with the kind of the food, if we if there's something that we want, <laughs> we're gonna get it. Because it's within that brand. Because it's within that, within that, uh, what you call it, that budget. Within that, yeah. <laughs> this is what I try to do. I don't do it as much and I need to get back into it. But I bought a, I'm going to leave a link below. They do give you a certain amount of money when you um, sign up. I don't know how much it is at this time. So don't quote me on it, but I'm gonna do a screen share on the screen right now. So I bought a, what you do is, and this is a perfect time of year to do something like this because they are upping <clears throat> the amount of money they give you back. Yeah. Pretty much they're giving you money back for the stuff that you're gonna buy anyway. Right. But you can be strategic and buy things that they are offering so that you can get more money back. So for instance, I'm about to go to, so everybody has Walmart. You can. All right, so for instance, right now, you can see a check mark at the 50 cent mark. So for any grocery receipt you scan after you've checked out to Walmart, you'll get 50 cents back. For instance, you had cheese on your list. Okay, let me go ahead and plus that right there. We gonna go ahead and sometimes you have to watch like a little 15 second ad or whatever, as you can see right here. 
then you can click off of it. It's like one in every 10 yeah. things that you add to your cart. It's annoying, but it's free and you get money back. So with that, see, you see it turned. Then they gonna offer you some more stuff. You wanted to buy some Land O'Lakes butter, boom. You had butter on your list, you was gonna get carry gold. Getting $4.89 cent back mm -hmm. for Land O'Lakes butter sound a little bit like I'm gonna go ahead with that. Get that. Because <laughs> that makes the butter free. Boom, check that. You want you some Nestle Toll House morsels this week? $3.31 back. So on and so forth. Purdue chicken. You got chicken on your list? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was gonna buy Tyson this week, but I'm buying Purdue this week because I get a dollar back after I scan my receipt. That's a good way to strategize and strategically do your grocery list so that at the end of it, you get money back for the stuff that you already are gonna buy anyway. But see, she in love with that kind of stuff. Yeah. To, to me, in my opinion, it's, it's a waste of time. So y'all sign up for our bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you get your receipts. Whenever someone gives you, make sure you get even your pickup order. Where my, where my receipt at? Because you gotta scan the receipt. And whatever method of rebate you put in the system that you want your money back, that money will roll right on back on over there. And I use it to buy stuff on Amazon real fast. They're working in the house with each other every day. Do you ever feel like you need your alone time from your spouse? Crazy enough, during the day, like if y'all watched last year's Vlogmas, we're alone most of the time. Like we don't bother each other during right. the day. Like we are in our own space. Mm -hmm. You know that they're there. It's almost like working in an office with your coworkers. They there, you know that they're there, but you're not interacting with them right. all day long. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, no. That's enough to drive anybody crazy. Yeah, just on a certain time. Yeah, certain but times on the day. at the same time, being in the same space every day does get to you. So what we do is we make sure that in our spare time at night, we're doing things to get out of the house because you do have to change your atmosphere, your environment. Yeah. But for the on the real, I think it helps us that I'm an extreme introvert. I know y'all probably don't believe that. Um, Stanley has introverted ways as well. Right. Like he, if he don't want to fool with people, he really just don't. Me, I prefer not to. <laughs> but it doesn't bother me to be by myself. Like I'm a person that I could be on an island to myself Oh, it don't bother me either. And I will be a-okay. Um, but the funny part is, but we love people. Yeah. That's it's, it's, that's the... Yeah, it's the bipolar part. Because right. when it when it's time to be with people, we all we in. the people. Yeah. So like, yeah. So like when it comes time to hang out with people, we all in. Yeah. All energy in. And then once we get to a point like, okay, I need to retract. I need to... Get my skit back together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then I can do it again. Yeah. Now, but some people can stay around people all, all the time. The time. That Just, would drive me insane. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's certain energies that I can be around as well. Like certain people, I just, I can't be around too long. It just drains <laughs> the heck out of me. Um, have I made it to a year with my sister locks? Yes. Um, actually I have micro locks. Let me start correcting that. I call them sister locks because most people know that as a blanket term. Most people don't know what micro locks is. Um, technically my loctician is a sister lock technician. So my micro locks look very similar two sister locks. They're not on the exact grid because that's against the law. <laughs> right. But for the most part, that's the blanket term that most of us use because that's the known term and you don't feel like correcting people all the time. So let's get that out of the way. Micro locks. I have celebrated my one year. I did it on TikTok. Don't use TikTok a lot, but yeah, I am officially one year and one month in. Yeah. Um, do you all have any chronic health issues? That nah. was such an intrusive question. <laughs> well, we don't. But we don't. <laughs> um, if you want to say like PCOS and things like that, then, but uh, yeah. Are you thinking about like, no, <laughs> thankfully. Um, question one, what staple supplements and snacks do you use even though you're no longer fully plant-based or keto? I still do the Morningstar sausage. Mm -hmm. Like that's mostly what we eat throughout the week. Um, six, four, seven bread is a great, yeah, um, staple. keto mm -hmm. staple. Yep. Any of the carb smart type of tortillas are a staple for us. Mm -hmm. Um, curry gold butter staple. Pistachios. Pistachios. Staple. Um, Halo top ice cream. 
the sea salted caramel in the other brand it's another brand that i'm looking at the kroger brand not the kroger brand it's la 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 it's the butter pecan rubble rubble yeah, rubble butter pecan keto ice cream best all the other flavors stay away <laughs> because they taste like chalk but those ones are the best supplements i take vitamin d I take vitamin C, I take vitamin K, I take C moss on a regular. I don't do anything that has iron in it because I have too much iron in my system because if y'all know, y'all know. Um, and also I take, I'm trying to look around the corner. Oh, a, pro a probiotic. After you have a hysterectomy, probiotics are your best friend. That's really. Yeah. I... Oh, and turmeric. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, me. The foods she said and all the other stuff, no, except for the sea moss when I just started doing the sea moss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Has your father reached out to you since your fatherless by choice video? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Um, give y'all a quick story that I never told on here, but my people in my real life know about it, is that my father actually was like deathly ill probably about a month ago. And it, became a lot on me because family members thought that you should just let bygones be bygones and you need to pick up and you need to be everything that he needs for you uh, from you right now because you don't know if this is the time where he's going to perish and all of this and like I said I don't accept toxic behavior and I don't take well to people that want me to right um Yes, he did get a little better and he's at home, but I don't expect it to be another year of this. I really don't. Um, at the end of the day, Lynette's gonna do what Lynette has to do. Um, but Lynette will not accept this. <laughs> Just gonna leave it like that. Um, what positive things did I see from CMOS? Here's the crazy thing. <clears throat> I didn't actually see anything from the sea moss other than the fact that I feel like I'm not as hungry and I felt like my skin was glowing a little bit more than normal. I did feel like that. But when I got around my family, my family was like, what are you doing to lose weight? Uh -huh. Now, if you know anything about black families, they are gonna let you know a couple of things when they know your business and when you getting fat. Yep. <laughs> for when they told me that I was losing weight, I, I said, said, oh, girl, you gained a whole lot of weight. That's how they do it. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so I was like, am I? And y'all know, I can't do skit. I can't exercise. The only thing I can do is walk. And even here lately, because the weather has changed, I haven't been doing that. So that's the only thing that I can contribute um, contributed to is that it's the sea moss. Yeah. Is that it's keeping me, boom. Keeping my appetite at bay because I'm not eating as much. Now, I can't let you know because I'm I just I just got started. <laughs> so once I do it for a while, I'll let you know how it's, how it's benefiting me. Oh my gosh! Someone said, "Do any of you all want pets?" Here's the thing: I love animals. Like not like love them, love them, but like I would love to, I love a cat more than I love a dog. Um, because cats are cleaner to me. They are. They cover up their own poop. Mm -hmm. They're independent. Like a dog is like a kid. Um, but if we don't want children, I don't want animals. Because to me, it's the same codependency. <laughs> if I need to go out of town. That's why I told her we need a cat. Because like you said, a cat is self-sufficient. So it makes no difference. You don't have to have a cat set <laughs> when you go out of town. A cat will be fine at home what, until, yeah, until you get back. <laughs> they be looking at you like, Oh, you back already? All right, huh? Why are you back so soon? <laughs> yeah. Say, I love how you use your PG versions of your curse words, but my question is, do y'all cuss in real life? Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a whole, whole no. lot, but we do, yeah. Uh, like it, Steve Harvey said, there's cussable, cussable moments. <laughs> but yeah, there are, there are moments, and if there are some moments that y'all probably see me cuss a motherfucker in the comments. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, who gonna check me? Ain't nobody over here paying my bills for me. Will we be reviewing um, Power when Tommy comes in February? Without said. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, are we gonna give that show 
King of Napa a try. I have seen the previews, but not paid it any attention. Stanley said he's looked at it. It, it looks, looks like good. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but here's the thing: when it comes to shows for us, and a lot of people will ask us to do shows, and I'm like, maybe they don't know our thought process going into whether we'll accept a show or not, because we're both reviewing a show. We don't do anything that leans more on the line of being so masculine that I don't have a place in it, or so feminine that he doesn't have a place in it. So. If like I was reviewing the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and when there was a good balance between the men and the women, mm -hmm. Stanley was all in with it because he yeah. loved him some crazy Peter, uh -huh. some Greg, rest in peace, Greg. Yeah, man. Then when it became the female skit show, he yeah, bowed out. I bounced out. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what we do when we're looking at shows. Like, is are yeah. there going to be a balance, balance between the men and the women? Because who wants to do that? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about organizing your videos into a playlist? Um, da, 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 da. We definitely yeah, try we, it and we, and, and we fail. Yeah, so yeah, you, you actually bring it back to our memories because we talked about it, we need to do it. Yeah, we got it, work. but we need to do it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody wants to know about finances. One joint account, individual account, or all? All of the above. There are accounts that we have as joint accounts. There are joint um, accounts that we have that are for our bills that both of our incomes and side hustles go into so that bills can come out of. And we also have our personal money where we call it our get out of Dodge money. So if any one of us want to hack up and we don't want to be traced and you don't know where I'm at, you don't know I'm staying at the Four Seasons. <laughs> Y'all keep listening to her. <laughs> but yeah, we have all of that. But I will say that if you are a person that have single accounts outside of your mate, Go ahead and make sure you put a POD on file, which is payable on death, so that if anything were to happen to you, they can have access to that money. Because right. if not, they will put your money into um, small estates, mm -hmm. do all that, put it into probate, and uh, it will be a process yeah, to get yeah. your money out. So make sure you put a POD. Yeah. Thank me later. Yeah. Um, what is something that God got you through? I think the easier question would be something that he has not got me through. Yeah. Have y'all heard my life story? Like, and I got a, like the old folks say, I got a piece of a right man. Like really, like, you know, growing up the way that I grew up and having to be so independent and having to figure out ways at <laughs> 16 and 17 years old of how to navigate a home and making sure that Mm -hmm. I was doing it so seamlessly that other people weren't taking notice that she and he are by themselves and, you know, that kind of thing. And then, you know, growing up and then get, making mistakes in your own personal life and figuring out my first apartment, I got a roommate, she was a stripper. It was a lot that went on with that. Then I got my own apartment because I didn't want to be with a stripper no more. Then I ended up with a with a guy that was like so possessive over me, like not physically possessive, but like it. I felt like at some point I probably could die because he was just that possessive. And he got into some mess. Some dudes busting my apartment with guns, looking for some stuff, and that won't nothing but God that got me out of that got me out of that situation i was able to get out of my apartment no um termination fees like when you think about stuff like that you're like that's god <laughs> yeah. i really should not still be here did i did that they on love boat by mistake <laughs> when i thought i was smoking weed back in the day ended up in the er and they was like your oxygen was so low that if you hadn't come in you probably would have died or had severe brain damage or maybe i do Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, God has brought me through a lot. Okay. Yeah, just last year, y'all know I was had to tackle the Series Seven. That was one of the hardest things in my life, and you talking about having to lean on God for that to pass that. Yeah, so I would say that's like recent of like seeing God come through, which He did a ton of other stuff, but you know, what keeps you grounded? I would like to say that I've always been this person. Like nothing about me has changed other than the fact that I've gotten older, I've learned new things, and I've hopefully have improved over the years. But the person that I am, I've had like friends from middle school, high school, and they will tell you, I, there's nothing about me that has ever changed. Like I've always been loyal. I've always been a person that my friends can count on. <clears throat> 
I've always been that sounding board for people. Um, and I think it's because who am I? At the end of the day, what makes me, what would make me not be a grounded person? You, like I said, do you see where I come from? <laughs> that grounds a person. Right. And I would say, yeah, that and then, of course, also God helped keep us grounded. Mm -hmm. We're in partnership with God. And then also the love and the friendship that we have in our relationship, that helps to keep me grounded and the love from my, our family. Where would you ideally want to move to? Um, we talked about this a lot and what's the pros and cons of living where we live. The pros and cons of living in Virginia for us is that Almost entire our entire Her family is, is here, here. Uh -huh. in Virginia. Like we have family that migrated to like Philly, New Jersey, um, North Carolina, places like that. But for the most part, our family is here. That's a pro. Another pro for us is that Virginia has its things, which is a con. Um, Virginia can get really racist on you really quickly. But the pro of being black in Virginia is you learn to subconsciously navigate Virginia safely. Right. If that's if that's a thing that we a term we want to use is that we, even within Virginia, you know there are certain places that mm -mm, nope. If I don't got a squad of people mm -hmm. or I'm not mm -mm, I'm not going. Yeah. Because it can get real 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 quick. A place that I've always wanted to move to. I told y'all at first it was the Carolinas, like North Carolina. I've been trying to go to get to Charlotte for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Now that I go to Charlotte and visit Charlotte, Charlotte would be the same as moving to Virginia for us, less racist. But I feel like the change wouldn't be as drastic as I needed to be. So I would say Florida. That's what although I would say. Florida, racist Florida, Florida has been at the top of the yeah, so yeah, Florida. if we were ever migrate somewhere, it would be Florida. Should Most be people Florida. say Texas, but I think Texas wouldn't do it for me. I think somewhere where the climate is totally different, I have access to good flights, <laughs> cruises, <laughs> it would be Florida. Can we talk about financial planning when dealing with elderly and da 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 da? Listen, I think that's a good topic that we can talk about over on our other financial channel, which is Living While Saving. So I'll go into that there because there is no quick answer that I can give nah. you for that <laughs> in this video, real talk. But it is a good topic of conversation because that is happening to a lot of people yeah. where they're having to navigate those things. And it's a lot. Um, out of all of the TV shows that you've reviewed, any responses from writers or producers? No, but we definitely yeah. get the exposure and the love from the actors and actresses. Yeah, we do. Like, their their support of us is unmatched. Like, somebody asked me one day, said, why is it that you have so many celebrities or all these big name people following you all? I don't know. They just <laughs> like us. Yeah. And they treat us like normal people and we treat, treat them, them like, like normal, normal people. people. Like, I have access, we, we have access to some of the greatest with a click of a button and they will answer us. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we don't try to do nothing with that with that access. We just we just live our normal lives. Um someone wants Stanley to do the via survey. And yeah. he's going to do that. That's going to be a separate video. I've done it and it's it's something. Yeah, I'm good. I'm through the crack at it, my. Um Um have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Yes. yes. We actually started the process. And because of work and all of that, we just couldn't yeah. finish it. We put it to the side for right now, but it's still, it's still a possibility. Good. Yes. Um, someone said, what's an update on the house? Are you still looking? With the job market, I mean, with the um, housing market, how is everything going? Housing market is insane. We started the process and we had someone come over, look at our house. We wanted to put it on the market because the amount we could sell it for was frigging amazing and then in order to get into a house everything that we would have gained <laughs> we would go have to put into the new house because right. houses to buy houses are so overpriced right now mm -hmm. so it's off the table for right now yeah vacations Let's talk about vacations what is your next destination after august for the cruise if y'all don't know we have a group cruise going in august click the link below we'll get that out to you any chances of going to new york we really don't have anything planned Plan, yeah. after August because no. with 
COVID, you can't really plan. For us, yeah. we can't really plan. Um, any New York, can we give y'all a little secret? Other than Manhattan, we don't like New York. Yeah, we said if, <laughs> and we said maybe we need to go some with some people that can navigate us. But yeah, we, we didn't we, like it. We didn't like it when we came. Yeah. Uh, next trip to Florida, they want to double date with us. That's our free off uh, our fam Brandis and them smart moms. <laughs> Listen, the next time we're in Florida, we're going to link up. You hear me? Um, but I don't know the next time we're gonna go there. But you never know because it's a quick, straight through flight from here. Yep, right. To Florida. <laughs> That's the good thing about it. <laughs> um, I want to go on a nice trip for my birthday. Any suggestions? Jamaica! Yeah, it, or... Jam <laughs> or <laughs> stop it. Or um, hit me up on codefuntravel at gmail.com. We can talk about it. But we highly recommend Jamaica. If you have we do. Time. Are we familiar with Mr. Traveler? Absolutely. freaking lovely It's no way that you could be in this travel space and not know who they are. I also say that they don't get the love and the appreciation that they should get because when we talk about couples traveling and couples that give out informational videos, they were the first that I've ever seen do it. So, they get our love and appreciation over here. Yes, sir. Um, What has been the, your favorite trip? Jamaica. <laughs> what has been your worst trip? We can't talk because about it. We can't it. talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever been to Texas? I have never been no, interested man. in going to Texas, but everybody keeps asking me. I have. I, and, it, and it's probably from, you know, y'all remember the Pee Wee Herman movie what? from way back in the day? And, you know, that's when I first heard that song, The Stars at Night, A Big and Bright, <laughs> Deep in the Heart of Texas. I wanted to go to Texas because of that, man. I know it's weird, but yeah. Don't tell about this. But anyway, um, have we considered doing it all inclusive for our YouTube subscribers? Real yes. facts. Real facts. If we had not committed to going on this group cruise with our fam, um, Dre and Shan, it would have been an all inclusive for us. But we thought it would be dynamic that because we share audiences, and this is something that her audience has been on her for years about. And then and ours started, started us. Yep, we were so. like, it was like a match made in heaven that we collab and do a group cruise as our first thing to do with our subscribers. Yeah. But if it was just our audience by ourselves, all inclusive would have been it. Yeah, Cause y'all know that's what we like to do. So, so we'll that's see. That's coming. We don't know when, but that's coming. Though. Definitely. Um, how much vacation do you take over a course of a year? We try to squeeze in three major vacations mm -hmm. over a course of a year, and then we do staycations yeah, little or mini ones, yeah. maximize the weekend vacations where right. you do something on a Friday, maybe come back that Sunday or yeah. Monday to maximize that weekend. We try to do at least maybe four of those, but if we don't get that third major vacation in, we definitely do two yeah. a year. Um. Found your page while, look, while looking up Jamaica vlogs, and I've been twice already. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Come on with it. Any plans of going back to Jamaica? We were there in August, um, and we possibly will probably be back next year. Yeah. And then are we going to go to St. Lucia anytime soon? St. Lucia is actually what I'm looking at right now. Don't tell nobody else. <laughs> um, so it's funny that you brought that up. So you said y'all going in May? And that was around... Never mind. Now you're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, when you both decide to retire, will you travel more and will you do more travel vlogs after you retire? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go down into the travel agent questions. And I'm going to do a dedicated video on that as well because a lot of you all are interested in being a travel agent or trying to figure out how to weed through companies and all of that. And this is what I will say, and I'm going to go into depth on that video. If you're interested in becoming a travel agent, research is your friend. And the reason I say that is because research does not stop when you get into a company. Research is now your job. So start researching. If you're a person that don't like to research, then bow out now because there is nothing, <laughs> nothing short of research in the travel space. So research. 
but we will i will touch on that in a dedicated video and on that note we have rambled long yeah. enough all of the job related questions i feel like most of you all have could get that from previous vlogs um we don't want to go into it in this video is long enough so straight from va the dirty dirty south to us to town holla boom